So one of our other uh, delivery devices is something called CPAP. CPAP stands for Continuous Positive Airway Pressure. So it was kind of similar if you were to ride in a car and you would just, you know, kind of go down the highway and you stick your head out and open your mouth. As that air is rushing in, the purpose of that continuous pressure, uh, you know, positive pressure, is now it's helping the patient reduce their work of breathing. So when we look at um, using our, our CPAP, so I'm gonna show you, you know, the pieces and then we'll do a demonstration on the mannequin of how we would you know, kind of assist the patient with getting this on them. Um, this is something that um, we've seen a great reduction in the number of intubations that we've needed because of CPAP. So patients with you know, uh, COPD and um, you know, really kind of going into that respiratory failure, this device has really kind of helped them work through that exacerbation without having to be intubated, which has now allowed them, you know, shorter hospital stays and being able to kind of return home. So when we look at this continuous positive airway pressure, or CPAP device, it comes with a mask. We're gonna have a little uh, spider clip. There's a little mask that's kind of hold it to the back of the head. And this is now gonna kind of secure over them. One of the things we see with, the, with our patients is when we put this on, uh, it can feel very overwhelming. So uh, patients who have had it before who know that it worked, a lot of times they'll grab it from you because they know that it's gonna give them relief. Uh, but the first time that we're putting patients on this, if they've never had it, we're now reversing that natural process. When we normally breathe, like we remember from our breathing and respiration you know, lecture, is when we take a breath in, we have that negative pressure system that draws air in. The positive pressure works opposite. So now we're kind of forcing air into this kind of fixed cavity. So when patients are really struggling to breathe, they have accessory muscle use in there, you know, they're really working and they're spending a lot of energy trying to do something just to, to maintain their breathing. Now, this device, by forcing that air in, it reduces the amount of accessory muscle use that they need, it reduces their work of breathing. When we have patients who have fluid in the alveoli, um, it helps disperse that fluid. So now patients with pulmonary edema, we're able to kind of help um, you know, displace that, so like we talked about with our congestive heart failure patients. It does a lot of really good things. With that being said, we have to have a patient who is, you know, alert and is breathing spontaneously. So if we need to ventilate the patient because they're breathing inadequately, they're hypoventilating, this would not be an appropriate device. If the patient is um, too fatigued, so if they start to kind of nod, if they're too altered to understand our instructions, um, if we have a patient who is hypotensive, so if their blood pressure is already too low, um, you know, positive pressure ventilation is going to drop their blood pressure. So we remember that by forcing that air into our, our thoracic cavity, we're gonna reduce that preload, so we're putting pressure on the vena cavas, and that's gonna reduce the amount of blood that returns to the heart, which is gonna reduce the, the afterload, our cardiac output, which is gonna reduce our blood pressure. So we already know when we put somebody on CPAP that one of the side effects we're gonna see is that their blood pressure is gonna drop. So if they're already hypotensive, we would not be able to use this, this device. Anytime we have them on this, we need to have our BVM ready to go. So if they were to tire, we would need to take this off of them. Um, if the patient was vomiting, we would wanna take this off. So one of the things is we wanna to try to engage our patient. So when we have our patient, we wanna kinda of talk to them, explain what's going to, to, to happen, how this is going to help them. And then when we start to get it assembled, we'll have them kind of bring it up to their mouth and take a breath so they can kind of feel that. And then hold it, keep it there for a couple breaths. And then when they feel more comfortable with it, then we'll be able to kind of secure it to them. We'll show you how to do that. So there's a lot of coaching that goes, especially if this is the first time that the, the patient has, has used this device. One of the things that this does now is it creates PEEP. So that it creates that positive end expiratory pressure. So the alveoli, at the end of exhalation, what we're trying to prevent is them collapsing. So by having this continuous positive pressure, it helps keep them open. So now we have that surface area for gas exchange. So now, again, if we have a patient with respiratory you know, distress, uh, we're starting to look at them becoming hypoxic. Um, we're starting to see that you know, increase in severity. So this does a lot of really great things for our patient. Um, it, it's uh, a lot less invasive than an endotracheal tube. It reduces you know, their, their hospital stays. Um, and it's really simple to be able to use. The device that we have here is a uh, Bougenac. So this device, it doesn't have a, uh, a PEEP setting. We create PEEP with our O2 tank. So for this device, we have to have a, a regulator that goes up to 25 liters of, of oxygen. 
So when we set this, um, when we look at our, our people looking at that positive anticipatory pressure and it's measured in you know, uh, centimeters of water pressure. So when we set this to 15 liters on this device, that's gonna give us five centimeters of water pressure. When we set this to 20 liters, that will give us seven and a half liters of water pressure. And when we put it all the way up to 25, that will give us our 10 centimeters of water pressure. So we have our basic mask with our spider clip. We have the securing device, which will go around the head, which will show you how to put on. And then we have the device. This is what secures into here. We'll show you how to secure the device. And then the other end goes into our oxygen tank, just as we've looked at all of our tubing. So what we'll do now is we'll, we'll look at the mannequin and we'll show you kind of how to uh, secure this to the patient. Okay, so this is where now we would kind of start coaching the patient. We would have them, ideally we have two people or we can engage the patient and have them kind of hold this to their face. So what I want you to see is this kind of sits on the back of the head and it comes around and these clip onto this little blue device here. So now we have this attached to our oxygen. We have our patient who's now able to tolerate this. And now these little clips, they're adjustable. So we have Velcro where we're able to come in and if we needed to adjust the, the straps, we can do so once we have them to where we need to be. We secure them back in place. And now this comes up. So either my partner will help hold this in place or we're able to use the patient to kind of help hold this. And now these clip right on. We make sure that the mask, again, we don't want this going over the eyes. We wanna make sure we get a good mask seal. If we weren't able to get a good mask seal, that would be another contraindication. So if we had major facial trauma, that would, would not be. So now we can see this would be sitting down. It's secured into place. The way these straps come now, it does kind of cut off that peripheral vision. So now we have a patient who's struggling to breathe. We put them on a device that now feels kind of claustrophobic. When we secure it on them, we're kind of cutting off their peripheral vision. So you have to be able to talk to your patient, try to keep them calm. The more anxious they get, the more difficult it's going to be for them to be able to breathe. Now, we talked about having this set to you know, um, our flow rate. So if we're gonna start, we always start at your lowest setting for PEEP. Make sure that the patient's able to tolerate it. Um, certainly any open trauma, any uh, you know, uh, pneumothorax, we would, this would be contraindicated. We would not use this device. Um, once we have this set, so we would set it to, for this device, we would set it to 15 liters in order to get that PEEP. Some devices, um, you'll, you'll set your, your centimeters of water pressure to determine your PEEP. Um, you'll have a little, a little column there. Uh, so it all depends on which manufacturer you're using for your CPAP. One of the other things that we can do with this is we are able to do what's called an inline nebulizer. So once we have this set on the patient, if we also wanted to be able to give them that albuterol nebulizer that we talked about, we can now attach that to this device um, with our T-piece in our, in our chamber. So when we do that, any time I, I take this out, what's gonna happen is we're gonna end up breaking this positive pressure. So we, we don't wanna do that. Um, and we, if we need to, we, we wanna make sure that we minimize that. So I have my T-piece that we had looked at earlier. So this comes in, it sits in the device. This comes into the other end. And now this is where my chamber would go. Now, we talked about the nebulizer running at six to eight liters. And we need this to run at, to start out at a minimum of 15. And we may have to bump that up for a patient depending upon how they tolerate it. So if I'm going to run an inline nebulizer, I now need two oxygen sources. So I now need two bottles. So we have two O2 tanks. I would have this one with my O2 tube in, which it would attach just like we showed you before. And then this would be attached to my O2 tank, set at six to eight liters. This one set at 15 liters, and then we're able to keep this on the patient, okay?